So here I've got a book called Electrical Apparatus Making for Beginners. It was published in 1916 and it was given to me by a friend who had found it in a, a local junk shop. And it was published by a, um, or written by a, a very colourful named gentleman called Mr Albert V. Ball Hatchet. And he goes on to describe how for school children and the keen amateur to make your own zinc bichromate batteries using uh, concentrated sulfuric acid, of course, and uh, coating the plates with mercury, which obviously was freely available from chemists back in 1916. Uh, not really recommended, I don't think, under health and safety guidelines these days. Anyway, going through the book with all the projects, the thing that really captured my attention was this, um, this little motor. Uh, and I've attempted to make one of these myself. So the details in here are a bit sketchy, to say the least. There's no dimensions other than that... Uh, scale rules stood next to his model uh, but um, I thought he'd have a go so mine's probably a little bit larger and the um, the field coils here the field coils and the armature are made from mild steel uh, they were using black mild steel well I used I used ordinary uh, bright mild steel which I annealed in my wood burning stove by leaving it in there overnight to cool my uh, commutator and unlike his which was made of wood with bits of wire tied on. Mine actually is a piece of engineering plastic. I drilled four holes, pushed in some five millimeter rod and then brass rod and then turned away the center. So I've got a nice set of contacts. These are brass uh, brass shims, the uh, brass shims that I've used for uh, for the brushes. And uh, it's all in a little, nice little wooden, wooden block. So each of these coils has got 300 turns of wire, uh, has of the field windings. All this lot is joined up in series, and it runs quite nicely off of 12 volts. So if I uh, if I just put that in place and just turn the power supply on, and hopefully, hopefully it'll start. Now I thought it'd be fun to work out uh, just what speed this thing was running at, and uh, in order to do that, uh, I thought a strobe uh, light would be useful. So um, what I've done is I've got an LED connected to my signal generator. So here's my signal generator. You can probably see the LED flashing away there. And as I increase the frequency, obviously the uh, the rate goes up. So if I just uh, if I switch this I'll back to the, the motor, and if I just dip the lights, uh, I can point this at and just adjust my uh, signal generator until we find a point at which the rotor stops. So we're up to 39 hertz, 46, 60, 60, 65 hertz we're running at now. So 65 hertz and if I go to 64 it runs backwards. It's just stationary now at 64. So we can work out now what the, uh, the actual speed, rotational speed is with a simple sum. So if I take uh, this four pole pieces, by the way, so if I take the 64 cycles, or 64 hertz, divide that by the four pole pieces, and then multiply that by 60 seconds, that should give us RPM, and that works out at 960 RPM.